the gray for a natural look. We are at Foxwoods inside the Fox Theater here in Ledyard, Connecticut. It'll be home to a new champ tonight. 12 rounds for the IBF featherweight title. Valdemar Pereira, Fop Record, Rakaia Jim. They are trying to make the most of this golden opportunity. It's a long way from home for this son of a Thai rice farmer, but skill and will have taken 30-year-old Fabrikor Brakaya Jim to this moment. Boxing's odd politics have opened the door. His momentum looks to carry him through. That momentum includes an incredible mark of 47-1 and in his last 48. He makes his U.S. debut having won 14 straight, 10 of those by knockout. Brazil's Valdemir Pereira also is well-versed in streaking success. After taking part in the Olympics in 2000, he turned pro and charted a course to the top. The list of Brazilian world champs is short but sweet. Pereira can become part of this group if he fights the way he has the last two times he's appeared on ESPN. In August 2004, he faced former world title challenger Emmanuel Lucera. Valdemir steadied himself by the middle rounds and turned it on down the stretch. That win put his mark at 18-0. The last time he fought in the U.S. was one year ago. He took on Weaver Garcia in a scheduled 12-rounder. In the second round, it was a right hand that floored Pereira. But Valdemir was able to overcome it, and he turned the tables. Pereira bravely exchanged with Garcia, rocking him as the fight went on, earning a unanimous decision. Pereira overcame a childhood of extreme poverty, navigated his way through the muddled pro ranks, and now his life could change. Mudou muita coisa. Vou ajudar minha mãe a sair do aluguel. Finally, gonna change a lot. I, the first thing I would do is buy my mother a house, get a better house for me and my family, give my wife a better life. A lot of things definitely will change. There's Pereira. He learned how to fight because he was beat up as an 11-year-old when he was selling ice cream in the streets of Brazil. And here's The Rock, Rock Hyatt Jim. He told us yesterday that he feels fine after spanning the globe and dealing with the 12-hour time difference. Earlier, Teddy Atlas took a closer look at the keys for each fighter's title hopes. For Pereira tonight, he's got to deal with strategy, not just a tough guy. He's fighting a southpaw, so he's got to know where he's putting his feet and where he's moving. He's got to take his lead left foot and move it outside the lead right foot of the southpaw where he gets an angle and he can use the jab. And he better use that jab tonight, which he doesn't always use enough. Also, by moving this way, he stays away from the power hand, the back left hand of the southpaw. Rocky or Jim against Pereira tonight has to recognize what he has in front of him. He's got a pretty good defensive fighter who puts the earmuffs on, a little bit like Winky Wright. Keeps those hands up, but he gives you something. Doesn't move his head all the time, comes straight in. And Rocky or Jim, the southpaw, as I am here, has to recognize that and take advantage of it. He can use his jab, he can take what's given him. The body, outside the elbow, right here, either side. Also, like a young Tyson. Bing, bring it right up the middle for the uppercut. Also, he can get shots off. He can score a little bit because Pereira will handcuff himself by putting those earmuffs on. It's very important that Rocky Jim takes advantage of those spots. For the official introductions, we send it up to Mike Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur Palulo's Banner Promotions and Murad Muhammad's Eminem Sports presents the featured event of the evening, ESPN2 Friday Night's Fight. This fight, 12 rounds of competition for the vacant IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, the three judges ringside, George Smith, Dr. Clark San Martino, and Tommy Kazmarek. And when the bell rings, referee in charge of the action, referee Eddie Cotton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks trimmed in white, and weighing in tonight at 125 pounds from Sao Caetano do Sol, Sao Paulo, Brazil. He brings with him an undefeated professional record of 22 victories, no defeats, 15 victories by way of knockout, and ranked number four in the world by the IBF. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Valdemir Zelotao Pereira. 
And across the ring, his adversary fights out of the blue corner. He wears the red trunks and weighed in tonight at 125 and one half pounds. From Bangkok, Thailand, he brings with him a professional record of 52 victories against three defeats, 33 victories by way of knockout, and he is ranked number three in the world by the IBF. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Pavlakorb, Rocky A.G. Referee is Eddie Cotton, big ref for two little guys. Boxer. All right, both boxers, you receive my instructions in the dressing room, obey my commands, protect yourself at all times. All right, let's touch gloves, have a good, clean fight. And keep in mind, neither fighter understands English. The ring experience, they're close in age, but because of Pereira's lengthy amateur career, capped by the Olympics, he's had the shorter pro career. Rakai Jim has logged 198 more pro rounds. IBF title on the line. Make no mistake, Juan Manuel Marquez is the best Box. featherweight in the world. But to these two, this is the moment. Fulfilling the dream, who can call themselves a world champ? Herrera in the blue and white. Rakaia Jim wearing the Manny Pacquiao-esque red with yellow flames. Herrera has to deal with a southpaw. And Rakaia Jim has to deal with a fighter that has not learned how to lose yet. And also has to deal with traveling to the United States for the first time in his career. Does he travel well? We'll find out. There is so much to be said, Teddy, and I know we spend a lot of time on our tour talking about the mental aspect of such a physical game, but there is so much to be said about an undefeated fighter because he doesn't know how to lose, such is the case with Pereira. 22-0. Okay. Coming in here to Connecticut for this world title shot. The Rock, Rakaia Jim, has been on quite a tear. He met up with Manny Pacquiao back in October of 2002. That was for the IBF world title at 122 pounds. And Pacquiao blew him out. Put him down four times in the first round back in the Philippines. In fact, it was a scary scene as Rakaia Jim was unconscious on the canvas, laying there for 20 minutes before he was able to get up and the medical attention was able to handle that situation. Pereira tries, first round. Pereira tries to make everything mean something, everything count. He tries to make sure he's in position and he doesn't look to waste much, Pereira. Another thing he doesn't do, he does not use his jab enough. Something but, we will monitor tonight, Teddy. Southpaw went to the body moments ago, did Rakaia Jim. It's always important to use a jab, but for Pereira, maybe even more important that he's facing a southpaw. Because the southpaw, if he doesn't have to worry about a jab, he can really behave like a southpaw. They were unorthodox to begin with, but now when they're fighting an orthodox fighter and he's not using a jab, the southpaw suddenly becomes real trouble. No jabs landed for the rock so on, far. Pick him up, pick him up, both guys, pick him up. When you're facing a southpaw like Pereira's doing, you want to use that jab. Even if it doesn't land, it doesn't feel comfortable coming from that side when you're facing a southpaw. But use it anyway, just to keep this southpaw busy, just to give him something to worry about, and just to make sure that you are not taking that part of your game away, that you are not limited only to the big shots. Right now, Pereira looks like he's looking for only the big shots. But the good news is he makes sure he's in position when he lets them go. You don't see Pereira throwing too often when he's out of position. He makes sure his legs are there. He makes sure usually his distance is safe. I'll get you know your first round between Pereira and Rakaia Jim, scheduled for 12 for the title. LJ, Greg, and I were going over some plays the other night. Round number two for the IBF featherweight title here at Foxwoods. Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you. Herrera in the blue with white. Rakaia Jim in the red and yellow flames. Trying to shoot off that left hand is the southpaw early on here in the second round. I talked about earlier about Rakaia Jim. Can he travel well? His first fight in the United States is tonight. 
Pereira, most of his fights have been in Brazil, but he has fought in the United States. He's fought here. Matter of fact, he had a nice win here against Rogers Motagua. That win was right here in Connecticut back in 2004. Then he showed up on our air and took on former world title challenger Emmanuel Lucera, who Manny Pacquiao once faced, came up with a good-looking win against Lucera. Then, January of 2005, he faced Weaver Garcia, and Teddy went down in that second round. We showed the highlight before this main event and had a lot to come off. And there's a good left hand from Pereira, and now he goes to work. Everything thrown by Pereira is wide and hard with bad intentions. Look at Pereira go to work indeed. There, may be, the hand. there may be an opportunity for Rakaia Jem to punch him between one of those shots. But there's a lot of danger laying on the ropes with Pereira. And now the veteran Thai fighter ties up, but he had his guard down for a while there here in the second round as Pereira was on with the assault. If Rakaia Jim can survive here, he'll get a spot of rest because Pereira goes into defensive spots where he'll let you recover a little bit. Right now is not one of those spots. The work rate by Pereira for the last minute has been unreal. Another hook up top, and now let's see if The Rock can try to mount some offense and return fire. Looks like he steadied himself. And you can see Pereira slows down, then gets back to work again. Again, right a lot of wideness from those shots with Pereira. Once Rakaijim gets his legs under him a little bit, he may have an opportunity to punch him between. There's a low blow by Pereira, but it was on the side where the referee could not see it. There's a looping right hand from Valdemar Pereira, and he's following the tie fighter into the corner. Rakaijim does not have his guard up at all. Rakaijim is very undisciplined with his hand placement. Does not keep those hands up, as you just said. And Pereira does a good job right now of throwing his hands, but also keeping those hands up high in a good defensive, solid posture. Again, with Kaya Jum, when he steps back, you can see, very undisciplined with that hand placement. Very reckless, and he's been paying a price for it. Again, no jam from Pereira, just big shots. And right now he's been getting an opportunity to let those big shots go as Rakaia Jim was hurt and defensive all of that round. What a big round for the undefeated Brazilian and the 31-year-old now back in the corner after that explosive second round. Muito bom. Let's take a look back at the first big connect shot from Pereira. Again, the hand's not up. Rakaia Jem standing straight in that punching zone, straight up, and leaving himself available to a shot that hurt him. And once he was hurt, Pereira just jumped on him. Nothing fancy, just let those hands go. And later on in the round, again, Rakaia Jem standing in front, hands down, and a looping right hand does the damage. And then a lot of shots followed after that. Fafrakor Rakaia Jam. When the bell rang to end the second round, he actually gave a pose and flexed his muscles to the crowd. He's a tough kid. You know, he's a tough kid. He's a southpaw, but he's fighting in the United States for the first time and a lot to ask. A real tough spot. He's coming off nine months in activity in the United States with an undefeated fighter. And the worst thing that can happen many times in that situation is to start slow and have another guy be on fire and look at the red hot numbers from Pereira in that second round 57 of 110 landing 52 percent well good choice by Pereira understanding that Rakaia Jem is coming off nine months in activity maybe a little rusty a little slow early a little tentative early, coming to the United States for the first time. Pereira taking advantage, getting out of the gate quick. Pereira
Rivera coming off six months in activity himself. Southpaw with Kaya Jam and the red with yellow trunks has been targeting that straight left to the body of Pereira. He's very, very calm. For a guy that was under such an attack and so much pressure, there is a calmness to him. Of course, that comes with such a lengthy career. He has fought 55 times as a pro. And even though he was under attack, great attack the last round, there are spots because of the style, Pereira, where Rakaia Jim gets a chance as he's getting the last 30 seconds to recover and do well in the round and get himself together. Because you could see Pereira, he puts those earmuffs on, a little bit like Wiggy Wright, and sometimes he'll go defensive a little bit. Lay in front, handcuff himself just a little bit where he gives Rakaia Jim a chance, if not to score, to rest. Right here, you could see it. Pereira takes himself out of the offensive flow. Gets disconnected a little bit. Stays on the outside. Goes defensive. And right now, early in this round, allowing Rakaiachim just what the doctor ordered. A chance to get his legs under him. And I mentioned the last round that if he could survive those spots, he would get that chance, Joe, for the action to slow down. And Pereira has given him that chance. Straight left from the southpaw. See, Pereira is either on or he's off. He's either attacking or he's defensive. Just watch him. Right now he's defensive and he's giving Rakaia Jim a chance to do two things. To score a little bit, get back in the fight, get a little confidence, and to rest and get his legs under him. Needs a little more fluidity to his game of having the flow where offense and defense are meshed together. Exactly. He doesn't talk and chew gum at the same time. Now there's where he buttons up like Winky Wright defensively, but nothing is coming back the way Wright does with that jab. No, you just have to worry about spots with Pereira. And right now, Rakaia Jem did a good job of dealing with those spots, getting back in his fight. Time! The Blade is ringside for Friday Night Fights. Iran Barkley, the former middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight titleist back in 88. KO Tommy Hearns to win the middleweight title. Round number four between Pereira, the undefeated Brazilian, and Rakaia Jim, the well-traveled, weathered veteran Thai fighter who has made the long trip here for his U.S. debut to fight for the IBF featherweight world title. A look at Teddy Atlas's scorecard, a 10-8 second round in which Pereira was all over the rock. Big, big left hook started things off, and then Rakaia Jam coming back in the third round. Remember that old product that was a commercial for the spot remover? Sure. Well, Pereira could do a commercial for that, because he's the spot man. He fights in spots. Right now, he's looking for one of those spots, but then there's other spots where he's strictly on the defense. And that's all you have to worry about with Pereira. Don't get caught in one of those spots. And I think Rakaia Gem is starting to get a little confidence and a little idea of that style. Right now, just like we were talking in the tips earlier, you could see where Pereira gives you an opportunity, Joe. He handcuffs himself, and he gives you something. He gives you a chance to get off some shots, to score a little bit, and to navigate around the ring a little bit. Look at Pereira. He needs to be set to punch. If you don't stand right in front of him, if you move around him a little bit, take what he gives you, you can have some success. And in a 12-round championship fight like this, that's a lot of time to figure things out and then apply it. So a positive for Fapracor Rakayachin. There is a silver lining in that dark cloud that was hanging on for Rakayachin in that second round. And the silver lining is he's getting back in this fight. Pereira's giving him opportunities. Punch track tracking the total jab so far in the fight. Pereira landing 37%. Southpaw not working the jab much at all. You know, Pereira has an accurate jab. He doesn't miss much. It's nice and straight and stiff. But it's not used enough. He 
uses it too often just to pour a little bit, just as a measuring stick for those shots, the big shots. Came in with a left hook to start this flurry twice. And now you can see Rakaia Jim complaining, looking over to Eddie Cotton saying, hey, that was a little low, but nothing was broken up there. So Pereira just kept working and working. Rakaia Jim was lucky he didn't get caught a clean shot there. Protect yourself at all times. End of round number four. You can now get a Quiznos Real Deal Steakhouse beef. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. IBF featherweight title on the line here on Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color. Round number five between Valdemar Pereira in the blue and white. He's undefeated, comes from Brazil. He's impressed us two times before on ESPN. Taken on Fapricor Rakaia Jim. And the punch track stats breaking down the headshots. And you can see Pereira doing a little head hunting. But a lot of those statistics were accumulated in a second round in which he was able to land a left hook and then just fired time and time again to the head tip. Pereira wants to walk down Rakaia Jim. Rakaia Jim wants to box, wants to stay on the outside, move a little bit, get some angles, and keep Pereira, who needs to be set to punch, off balance. And take advantage of those spots where Pereira handcuffs himself, puts those earmuffs on, and gives him a chance to get off some shots and then get out. And that's exactly what you can see what Kaya Jim is trying to do here. Take advantage of those spots, but don't do that. Don't lay in front too long right in front of Pereira when he needs to be set to punch and you're right there in his wheelhouse. You don't want to do that with Pereira right in front of him. He's set to punch. He's going to let him go. Great right hand came in from Pereira moments ago and then he backed it up behind a jab again. Comes in behind the jab there. Again, plenty of opportunities for Rakaia Jem, who was hurt in the second round, to recover, get his confidence, get his bearings together, because Pereira only battles in spots. Sometimes goes defensive a little too long. As you said, Joe, takes himself out of the offensive play a little bit too much. Has to learn how to combine the two. Let defense and offense coexist. He has not learned that. Two times in a row, the southpaw goes to the body with that straight left hand, does Rakaia Jim. Final minute of this fifth round. Both fighters in top peak condition. Pereira eight pounds less than his last fight. He knows what this fight means. IBF title on the line, a golden opportunity that really was created by the politics of the sport, but nonetheless means the world to both Pereira and Rakaia Jim. Juan Manuel Marquez, bar none, the best featherweight in the world, but both of these guys happy to have the chance to call themselves a titleist. And if, again, Pereira waiting in front, defensive a little too long, but Rakaia Jim not taking advantage of it and doing some scoring. Coming to the end of round five, let's check in with Brian Kenny and see here where he does. All right, good stuff so far, and Rakaia Jim still standing. We didn't wonder, we wonder if that was going to be happening at this point in the fight. What do you think of the fight so far, Zahir? I think it's a very interesting fight, very entertaining. Rakaia Jim is very durable. He's taking a lot of punishment, and I think Pereira uh, is tired now. I think he's catching his breath. I think later on in the fight, he's going to pick it up again, and uh, he's going to get him out of there. You think he will? I think he'll stop him. I think he'll end up stopping him because Rakaia Jim can't. He's not, he's not giving me no offense. Pretty good chin, though, Rakaia Ooh, Jim. And body <laughs> shots. I mean, he's taking him to the chin and the body. Yeah, oddly calm when he got drilled. Still just kind of looking dead calm, even when he got that badly hurt. That's a very durable guy. I don't know where he learned it, but uh, I, I got to take my head off to him. He's very durable. Good high-level stuff. Well put uh, as well, Joe, about uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. If we uh, went into uh, why everybody uh, lost their belt and how it was stripped from them, we wouldn't have time for actual boxing, but well put. Anyway, they'll fight for the trinket. Joe? Yes, the required trinket reference by Brian Kenny here, but nonetheless, the IBF title on the line here, and Rakaia Jim has come a long way to get it. You are watching Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color. We are at the fabulous Foxwoods Resort Casino. This Fox Theater hosting its 43rd world title fight. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. 
And Zaheer Rahim is our guest analyst this week. Zaheer, I want to ask you one question here. On the day before, Morales versus Pacquiao. Morales, a top fighter that you defeated. Do you get frustrated with the business of boxing when you look at the fact that you beat Morales, but yet he's cashing in huge in 24 hours? Uh, absolutely, but you know, you know, one thing I, I, one thing I keep in mind is that you know, only thing I can say is Bob Barham. I mean, it's his promoter, it's my promoter. He tried to use me as a pawn, but I, I, I won't stand for it. I'm the king. And the only way to show that is fighting and keep winning. Eddie Cotton breaking the action. Go, go. Pass out a warning to Rakaya Jim, and they touch him up. Zahir Rahim with us all night long. Thanks for your comments. And with Brian Kenny doing a fine job. Our first Friday night fights of the new year. Glad to be coming with you from Foxwoods. We've held more Friday night fights at this venue than any other. And we will be back here on February 10th to see Paulie Melanagi against Donald Camarina and Emmanuel Augustus versus Emmanuel Lucier or Emmanuel Claudi on Friday night fights. Zahir Rahim, a former Olympian. As Pereira is, having represented Brazil in the 2000 Olympics. And again, Pereira, as we said earlier, Joe, Pereira giving plenty of opportunities for Rakaia Jim by just shutting off offensively, giving Rakaia Jim plenty of opportunities to hang around. But one thing Rakaia Jim is not doing enough of, not moving his hands and taking advantage of those opportunities. It's more... He's got to do more than just what he's doing now, which is surviving and existing. He's got to find a way to start scoring and getting back in this fight that I believe he's behind him. You know, Brian Kenny brought up a descriptive point that we talked about earlier in, in talking about Lakaya Jim, and that is a certain calmness with him. The mouth is closed. Yeah, maybe too calm. Uh, oh, maybe, exactly. Maybe too much so. Too calm, because the door's been left open a little bit by Pereira, but Lakaya Jim is still standing out on the steps. There's opportunities for him to do more than what he's doing here. He's existing, he's surviving, and surviving a tough spot in that second round. But he's not doing some of the scoring he needs to do to keep Pereira in control and to get back in his fight. And again, Pereira has given him those opportunities by putting those earmuffs on and going defensive in spots. World title on the line, coming to the halfway point of this schedule, 12 rounder. We make 18 a week. Action from the last round. You could see Pereira giving Rakaia Gem an opportunity to do something. To do more than just rest, to score. But Rakaia Gem just not moving those hands. And that's why he's behind in this fight. Off balance for a moment here to start the seventh round. Pereira and Rakaia Gem. IBF featherweight title on the line. Rakaia Gem. Fought for a world title at 122 pounds. Lost to Manny Pacquiao, was annihilated in one round. He then avenged that loss, at least with the family name, by knocking out Bobby Pacquiao, who has had a sensational past year. He knocked out Bobby Pacquiao back in February 2005 in Thailand. You know, Pereira winning this fight, paying no attention to the conventional way that the old trainers like to fight a southpaw. He's standing right in front of the southpaw, right in his wheelhouse, not moving to his left too much, keeping his left foot outside the right foot, but he's paying no price for it because Rakaia Jem just not letting those hands go. Right now, as I say it, of course, Pereira does start moving to his left a little bit outside the southpaw's left hand. But for the most part, Pereira paying no attention to that, just doing his thing. Coming forward and letting those hands go, and he doesn't care if he's on the left side or the right side. He feels like he's the boss, he's the stronger guy. We talked about Pereira needing to be set to punch, and Rakaia Jem can't stand in front of Pereira. He must box, he must get off shots and give little angles, little movement around the sides. The physical proof for that is Pereira, the bigger man. Most of his career, Joe, featherweight. His last two fights between junior lightweight and lightweight. Rakaia Jem, besides all the other problems he has in his fight, he's the smaller guy his entire career between bantamweight and featherweight. Yeah, so going he, back all the way to 93 was a bantamweight, Teddy. He can't afford to stand in the wheelhouse of Pereira. Pereira can stay in his wheelhouse, though. 
you could juxtapose that that same theory with tomorrow's super fight between Morales and Pacquiao. Many people forget that Manny Pacquiao stop her, stop her. started as a flyweight. That's right, and that's why I like Morales in that fight. He's the bigger guy. He's the bigger guy as far as pure substance, as far as you know strength, and he's also got the edge as far as length and size. Work from the jab from Valdemar Pereiro. The 31-year-old, 22-0, came here from Brazil, of course. Now going to work. He turns the offense on, turns the defense off. Teddy's been talking about that all night long. Good exchange here at the end of round number seven. Of course, the Brazilian connection continues. Asselino Popo Freitas came here to see Valdemar Pereiro. And earlier tonight, I had a chance to speak to Brazil's most popular athlete. Trainer Oscar Suarez transing for Popo Freitas. It was a year and a half that he suffered his only loss right here in this building at Foxwoods. Where does he think his career stands now? Hace un año y medio que usted sufrió su primera derrota aquí ante Diego Corrales. ¿A dónde usted piensa que su carrera está en en este momento? Ah, yo no creo que fue totalmente una derrota. Que los verdaderos campeones ellos se muestran derrota y por eso estoy aquí hoy en pie y queriendo retorno. Cuando yo peleé con casa con Diego Corrales. É, ele não era ranqueado, não era obrigatório e eu cedi, agora que sou obrigatório ele não quer pelear comigo The two champions are the one that's still standing and he's standing here right now you know, being waiting for the rematch that was mandatory from him Diego Corrales wasn't even in his ranking when he gave him the opportunity and it's a shame that uh, he denied the opportunity of giving him the mandatory rematch, you know basically he is back, people are going to see where his career is standing after he gets his next title chance and there is Popo. He is in the corner of Valdemar Pereira. He's such a big personality. He cannot hold himself back, Teddy. In between rounds, he keeps getting up there and screaming to Valdemar, handing him out advice. Of course, he's been in this spot before. And the question I would like to ask him is, how do you get your confidence back when that was such a big part of your game? It was power and it was confidence when it was taken away the way it was taken away with that loss to Corrales. Very interestingly enough, our studio guest tonight is Zahir Rahim, and that is an opponent that some people have been tossing out for Asselino Popo Freitas. Round number eight, IBF 126-pound title on the line. Punch track headshots in round number seven. Pereira went there. He was 25 of 64, good for 39%. Well, I have... Rakaia Jem way behind in this fight. He's going to make a choice right now, a decision. Is he going to just survive the rest of this fight, or is he going to go out there, take some risks, some chances, and try to win? 69-63, the Thai fighter trailing on Teddy Atlas's scorecard. He has won 14 fights in a row, 10 of those 14 by knockout. Rakaia Jem just being satisfied to still be here. Showing plenty of gameness. And a pretty good chin as a lot of low blow comes in there and there's a warning coming up. Okay, because it's a couple times, all right? All right? Okay? But what Rakaia Jem has not done is move those hands and try to get back in this fight. And Eddie Cotton is going to give Rakaia Jem five minutes. Now, communication is such a big issue in a global sport like boxing, but neither fighter speaks English. So the hand signals, very, very important. And you could hear Eddie Cotton saying to Valdemar Pereiro, hey, I warned you a couple times, you got to get him up. And then saying to Rakaia Jam, hey, you can walk around a little bit. They don't understand a thing he's saying. No, but it's a universal language. Low blow yeah. hurts. Exactly. <laughs> that is universal. Come on, let him go, let him go, turn. Come on. Down there, bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Final minute of round number eight. Again, Pereiro comfortably ahead as far as our scorecards go, but giving opportunities for Rakaia Gem to stay in this fight. Now it's up to Rakaia Gem to separate himself from that mentality of just staying in the fight. Does he want to win the fight? And to do that, he's got to take some chances. He's got to do that. Start letting those hands go. Got to make the most of it when you're a guy like Rakaia Jam who's had 55 pro fights. You've already fought for the world title four pounds below this weight class, and you traveled 12 hours to get here. Both these guys throw jabs like they're paying for them, and they're cheap son of a guns. 
Got to do just it not that. use those jabs too often. But again, Pereira, when he does use it, it's pretty accurate. Four rounds to go for the IBF title. Turn, turn, turn. Pick up. Wow, that... Ninth round. Rakaia Jam needs to get to work. That's been our take so far. He's wearing the red trunks with the yellow flames, taking on the undefeated 31-year-old former Olympian Valdemir Pereira in the blue with white trim. Comes from Brazil and wants to bring a world title back to South America. Pereira's the stronger man. He's shown that throughout the fight, but he is vulnerable. There's vulnerability there. There's opportunities there for Rakaia Jam to do well. He's just not taking advantage of them. And they're pretty simple. Move your hands when Pereira, who needs to be set to punch, puts those earmuffs on as we talked in the, in the setup piece when we were talking about the tips. Pereira will give you opportunities. He'll go defensive. He'll give you something like he's doing right now. Rakaia Jem just not taking it enough. You know, that's a long way to travel for Rakaia Jem to come all the way over here and have opportunities to win and just basically stay in there and survive. Maybe that long way of travel has a lot to do with what well, we're seeing. It can take a lot out of you. That's why we made the point, does he travel well? 12 hour time on. difference, spanning the globe to get here. Fortunately, he did come in last weekend. Still not enough time. From well, you, you've trained guys internationally. Not enough time. You like to get into the town that you're going to be in when you're traveling long distance, get acclimated to two everything. Weeks. Have two, to weeks. Have two weeks. At least two weeks. Otherwise, you're in the middle of that transition, that acclimation period where you're still jet lagged. You're working more on getting your sleep together than you are getting ready for the fight. And sometimes it catches up with you actually on week six, on day six or seven of that cycle. Feels like you're walking uphill. When you're really in the ring on level right, so footing. Let's go, pick up, pick up, pick up. Come on, let's go. So maybe that's the cause of the less than stellar output from Fabrikorb Rakayat Jim. When I had Michael Moore fight Axel Schultz for the title over in Germany, I made sure we were over there for two solid weeks. And it took a week just to get ourselves feeling good and acclimated. Teddy, there are camps that go as far as you know of shipping in their own water, shipping in their own food, having the same water, the same food, doing whatever it takes when you travel that distance to come halfway around the world to make you feel like you're at your best. Well, you don't want to take a chance on eating strange food and getting sick, getting the diarrhea or some kind of virus before the fight that can weaken you. There's no doubt about that. And again, there's no doubt Pereira has given opportunities for Rakaia Gem to score, to grab rounds. Rakaia Gem has kept his hands in his pockets. Rakaia Gem has won 14 straight, but maybe an uphill battle ahead of him here. Come to the end of round nine. This is Duralast, the best. Live well. Welcome back. IBF title on the line. Fapricorp Rakayat Gem in the red with yellow. Taking on Valdemar Pereira, the undefeated Brazilian. Rakaia Gem, you know, all those uh, letters, a Wheel of Fortune letter turner, Vanna White's worst nightmare. But that's not actually his real name over in Thailand. The boxers will take the last name of the gym that they train at and will take a boxing nickname or a sponsor's name. So Rakaia Gym is literally the camp that he trains out of. That would be the Rakaia Gym. I suppose the equivalent of uh, Brett Favre being named Hustle Lambo. Feel like I'm on Jeopardy. Indeed. 89-81. Pereira in complete control on Teddy Atlas's scorecard. That second round went 10-8 because he landed a huge left hook that had Rakaia Jam in serious, serious trouble but he was able to maintain his standing and survive. The problem is, his output hasn't been good at all. You know, he only I mean, threw 29 punches in the last round, Teddy. That's the low tonight. Can't win if you don't throw punches. It doesn't get more basic than that. You know, I've been talking about how Rakaia Gem has not taken advantage of opportunities given. We talked in the 
in the points of the fight, the tips of the fight, where Pereira would give you opportunities by putting the earmuffs on. He's given those opportunities, and we talked about Rakaia Jem not taking them, but let's talk a little bit about Pereira, who's not taking advantage. He's going to win this fight so far. He's on his way to that. Give him credit for that, and we have. But he hasn't taken advantage of a defensive-minded fighter where maybe he could win in a more sensational fashion and really, really put an exclamation point the way you want to when you want to say, hey, here I am. There's been a lot more than Pereira. You could make an argument about Rakaia Gem not doing much, but you could also make that argument on the other side of the ledger that Pereira could be taking better advantage of the lack of punching that Rakaia Gem has given him and shown him. I'd like to see Pereira get pushed a little bit in his corner and try to finish this fight. As I said earlier, with a little bit of an exclamation point. I think that opportunity is there for him. Right hand came in. And you can see The Rock is saying, come on, bring it. Problem is, you got to give something back. And the punch usually a favor of choice. Oh, says, oh, oh, that was a low one. And that time the referee was standing in the right position where he could see it. So a point is going to be taken away from Pereira. Time to walk it off. Walk it off. Walk it off. Go ahead. Take the time. Here's a look at the low blow. Low, a little bit on the side, but nonetheless, south of the border. Well, he was warned two or three times, and there was a moment a couple rounds ago where Rakaia Jim could have taken the full five minutes, but I think there was a little bit of a communication barrier, so now he is taking his sweet time here. Misdirected with about 20 punches, seconds to Joe, go in the tenth. Misdirected punches can come from that kind of punch, an uppercut, where you can lose a little control of the direction and accuracy of the punch. Okay. Time it. Especially when you're free swinging and free winging the way Pereira is. When he does move those hands. Coming to the end of round number 10 as both fighters now exchange after that pause for the low blow. We will head to the championship rounds when we come back, get ourselves a 126 pound king. There's an accident in this country every five seconds. Joe and Teddy with you on Friday Night Fight. Some big boxing news, good news for U.S.-based fans, and that is that the London Times is reporting that 140-pound king Ricky Hatton has signed a U.S. promotional contract with Banner Promotions and is coming to the U.S., Teddy. And Artie Palulo, Banner Promotions, is the promoter of this world title fight. And hey, that's good news, Ricky Hatton coming to the U.S. He is something special. He's exciting. He draws fans, and you need guys that can draw fans, and he's eye-pleasing to the fans. He's a guy that knows one gear and that's first gear in one direction and that's forward and he does something that the throwback trainers like he goes to that body consistently and very well Ricky Hatton does a lot of the things that Faprakorp Rakaia Jam could use right now the 11th round Rakaia Jam the Thai fighter veteran of 55 fights he fought Manny Pacquiao for the 122 pound title and now he has traveled here to Connecticut to meet up with undefeated Valdemir Pereira for the IBF featherweight title and he needs to get going here in this 11th round. A lot of Brazilian fans have come out here. Popo Freitas, their great champion, is here to support his fellow countrymen. And they just want Pereira to hang on for the next five minutes. Short left hand as Rakaia Jim came forward. And Pereira puts a one-two together. Well, usually, Steady work. Usually the punch of choice for trainers when they have their charge fighting a southpaw is the right hand. The straight right hand. And that hand has worked for Pereira against the southpaw of Rakaia Jim. And it has also worked against Rakaia Jim. Him too. Or three. The way I pronounce the names. Again, you can see the opportunities there for both fighters. Kaya Jem not doing much. 
Pereira could take control more, and of course, Pereira going into that defensive mode in spots, he's either punching or he's defensive. And those missed opportunities when Pereira has been defensive, Rakaia Jim has not taken advantage. Well, just look at the opportunities when Pereira goes defensive. Rakaia Jim can get shots off. He's given that opportunity. And just look at Pereira, how he's really only attacking when Rakaia Jim is right in front of him, when it suits him, when his legs are set. Any movement to the side, Pereira is not real quick to adjust and really adapt to that. Like right there, Rakaia Jim took three or four baby steps, set down on his feet. Pereira got a couple shots off. And now Rakaia Jim inviting him once again, but as we've said, do something with it. Well, you know, Rakaia Jim would be doing better on my scorecard if he would hit Pereira as much as he did on himself. A lot of those punch counts that are going to Rakaia Jim's chest, if they were going out to Pereira, he'd be a little closer, at least on some scorecards. And again, there's the right hand from this orthodox fighter with the southpaw. There's going to be one round to go. Brazil may have a new world catalyst. January 12th and final rounds. A hug between the Brazilian and the Thai fighter. IBF title on the line. Dreams can be fulfilled for one of these men if he holds on for three minutes. Likely, that would be the undefeated Brazilian Valdemar Pereira in the blue with white. Rakaia Jim is imploring him to come and fight, but yet isn't fighting himself. Somebody's got to explain to Rakaia but from the wait a minute. to go out, not in, and now they're going out, and he has a little success. And while you were talking, I was going to make a point. There's good news and bad news if you're in the corner of the Rakaia Jim. The bad news is you need a knockout to lose. The good news is Pereira was on the floor three fights ago. So there's hope for Rakaia Jim to put him there again. That happened on our air against Weaver Garcia. It was in the second round. And then Pereira stormed back. Two minutes to go. Can Rakaia Jim come up with the knockout we feel he needs? Finally, Rakaia Jim letting that power hand of the southpaw, the backhand, the left hand go. And now maybe Pereira paying a price for not doing what you're supposed to do textbook-wise with the southpaw. Staying in the wheelhouse, as we said earlier, Joe, getting away with it. Now starting to eat some of those punches. Not moving his left foot outside the lead right foot of the southpaw. Not staying away from that power punch. Maybe there's enough time left for Rakaia Jim still to pull this out. We're going to see. There needs to be an urgency from the tie fighter. 120 to go here in this IBF title fight. Well, no straight left is loaded up. Let's see if he can unleash it. Well, no matter what language you're speaking, and both these fighters come from lands where they speak different languages, it's pretty universal what has to be done if you're Rakaia Jim. Move your hands. Let him go. Let the leather fly. Final minute for the IBF featherweight title. Again, Rakaia Jim has Pereira in his wheelhouse, right in front of that backhand, that power hand of the southpaw, the left hand. Pereira not moving to his left, not going away from that punch, not keeping his lead foot outside the lead foot of the southpaw, as you can see from overhead now. It's up to Rakaia Jim to make him pay a price. If I was retired, Jim, I would just walk down Pereira now and let left hands go. Let the power shots go. Forget about the jab. Just let the power shots go because if you're going to win this fight, it's going to come from one big shot. The jab's not going to help you. You don't want points now. You want a knockout. Pereira right there, Rakaia Jim, again, just keeping his hands in his pocket too long. Valdemar Pereira has reason to celebrate. Seemingly the new IBF featherweight titleist as Asselino Freitas has joined him to celebrate in the ring. We'll get the judges' scores when we come back. This is it, my time to shine.
champion Martina Hingis continues her comeback. Third round action. Martina Hingis in the Australian Open coming your way next on ESPN2. Brian Kenny, Zahir Rahim here to wrap things up. We're going to have the decision for you in just a moment. First, what's up next for you? Again, we hear about uh, you know Hatton coming over with Artie Palulo. You figure he might match him up with Freitas. What about you? What's next? Well, if, if Freitas and Ricky Hatton do fight, then I would take the next in line for the WBO or, in fact, maybe Morales rematch. Mm -hmm. It depends on if Morales really want to fight me or if Aaron wants to do it and uh, gets his little franchise fighter hurt again. I mean, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to destroy his image because he ain't going to beat me. All right, Corrales, Castillo, possibilities? What are your thoughts? Show me the money. I mean, anybody. I'm here, I'm here to collect your trinkets and, and, and dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why I'm here now. I've been in this game for a long time. You nope. know what I mean? So I, it's about making money and getting titles now. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to fight anybody in the world and they didn't run out the back door. No, nah, I'm here. Show me the money. Show me the titles. Let's, let's hand it, sign it, get, the, get it done. You can make a good case that you've never actually lost in the ring. That Juarez thing was, was this close with everything else. Zaheer, we enjoyed it. Appreciate we it. We got to go. Thank you very much. Make yourself visible in Vegas. Good luck tomorrow night. <laughs> Joe, Teddy. Great, great job, guys. Great job, Zaheer. Friday night fights. First Friday night fight of the year. It was a good one. Just for men, Hair Color presents the punch track. And you can see the total numbers. Pereira throwing 832 punches, landing 318 to the Rocks, 165. Teddy Atlas' scorecard. Well, it was pretty easy to make up tonight. That 10-8 second round sparked away, gave him lots of momentum for Pereira, 117-109 for the Brazilian. Does Brazil have a new world title? Is here's Mike Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision to go to the judges' scorecards, all three judges, George Smith, Dr. Clark San Martino, and Tom Kasmerick, all scored about exactly the same at 118 to 108. All for the winner and new IBF featherweight champion of the world, Vladimir Center 2, Pereira. He earned it every step of the way. Valdemir Pereira now 23-0 with the unanimous decision win over Fakrakorn Rukhayajem. Next week, we invite you to join us on Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color to see Kasim the Dream Oma against Francisco Mora. The proceeding has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Teddy Atlas, Brian Kenny, Zahir Rahim, I'm Joe Tessitore. Coming up next, Australian Open Tennis. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. It is obviously very, very hot for this fight. He thinks he should have been champion, had two draws against Castillo. He could have been the WBA champion. And Anatoly Alexandrov, his only other shot at a, at a world title. He lost the WBCA title in Texas to Gennaro Hernandez. This is back in June of 97. His ring record, 32 fights, he's lost three times, he has 13 knockouts. The three judges from Puerto Rico, France and Mexico. So I think these American judges from Puerto Rico and from Mexico, they would like to favor Julian Lossi because of his fighting style. And perhaps the Frenchman won't be the man who will be against Julian Lossi, but from the style of fighting, it could be much better with Alexandrov. Joey Cortez, we've seen him on many big fights. And the veteran referee bringing both fighters to the center of the ring for last final instructions. Right, Let's listen in. We went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Check in. Okay. Now, I, had a, I had a chance to talk to Lorsi, and I don't, understand, I don't think he understands English, but who cares? So let's get ready here. Scheduled for 12 rounds here in the Palais Omnisport 